In this video, we will take a look at how we can add more enemies to our level. Um, I can read from some of the comments that some of you guys have already tried to um, add an extra enemy to the game, but you're complaining about that these two enemies are following each other around. Um, and it's not because the enemies are following each other, it's simply just because they're not random or anything. So of course they'll start idling at the same time and they'll start running at the same time. So we can just try to duplicate this enemy here. If I go to my hierarchy and uh, press Ctrl D to duplicate the enemy, just rename this one to enemy. Uh, then you'll see if I, if I put the enemy down here, there's two things that we'll need to be concerned about. The first thing is the fact that they start idling at the same time and they will start patrolling at the same time as well. Let's just wait a few seconds. So the next thing is when it collides with this uh, platform here, you'll see that it gets pushed down. And yeah, it's running off the edge because we don't have edges on this platform. But I don't know if you noticed, we can try one more time. We zoom in here. You'll see that when she runs towards this platform here, she will get pushed down and then pushed up again. And that's simply because our collider script from our platforms are not handling enemies at the moment, as you can see here. So we'll also have to fix that little thing. Okay, first of all, let's uh, make sure that she will patrol back and forth here. So when you have taken an enemy and placed her on a platform, we will have to have these edges on the end here. Right now we have um, the top enemy here on this platform. And this large platform here has some edges on it up here. We can see we have edge left and right here. So basically these edges are just placed outside the platform, but it would make sense to place them inside the platform. So let's see, this is right edge. Let's just rename it to right edge and this is my left edge then and we need to lift edge so now I have my two edges here when you have them you can take them and figure out that this is the last platform so just take them and move them as child objects of the platform so we know where we have them so they're just not just laying around somewhere in the game world and um, we also have the bottom here it's bottom ground and we would also like some edges here, so basically we can take these two left and right edge, duplicate them, and move them. That's not what I want to do, I want to move, duplicate these two. And then move them up all the way to the bottom, bottom ground here. So now I have a left and right edge up here in the top. And I'll have to move them down so that they are down here, so that our enemy can't run off the edges of this platform. So we take the left edge and move it down here, so it goes around here. And we take the right edge, move it down, so it, she doesn't run off the platform here. So now we have placed the two edges, we can just rename them so they don't have this one after them. So now we have placed two edges on the platform, but if I remember correctly, we will need to tell the enemy uh, this one, see, nope, this one down here. We need to tell the enemy where the edges are, or maybe not, yeah, here. So the enemy script has left edge and right edge on it. Right now it's referring to this edge up here and this edge down here. So we'll have to make sure that this enemy down there is using the bottom grounds, left and right edge. So open your bottom ground, select the right edge and drag it onto the right edge on the enemy. Select the left edge and move it onto the left edge spot here on the enemy. So now this enemy here should be referring to this left edge and this right edge here. So let's try to play the game again. She will still get pushed down when she runs through the platform, but she should be turning around when she gets to the edges now. Let's try. Starts patrolling gets pushed down and she turns around. So now you can see she, she can only go to the edges of the platform. So now she's not running off the platform anymore, but it looks kind of odd because it gets pushed down by the collider here. So to fix that, we will have to open up the collider script, let's see scripts and ignore collision. Or well, not ignore collision, collision trigger, that's it. So the collision trigger script is a script that sits on every single platform, if you remember that. And every single platform needs to decide that it needs to ignore the player, for example. 
So there are a few things here we can change because right now our colliders only fit um, or they only look out for our enemy, uh, for our player. So we need to change something. Right now in the top here we have something called player collider. There's no point in having this one because we need to make the script more adaptive to other objects. So now, right now it's just looking at the player collider, but we will have to make sure that it looks at this collider in inside the exit and the enter functions. So basically you can go up here and delete the player collider. And then we can do, go down here and delete this line of code. And then we can go down here to the untrick enter 2D. And instead of using player collider, we're simply going to use other here because other is the collider that we're colliding with right now. This script is sitting on the platform. If you remember, this script here should be sitting here on the platform. So the platform is always looking out for who's colliding with me, who's colliding with me on every loop. At some point, something is going to collide with the platform and on trigger enter 2D is going to be called. And that thing that collides with the platform is going to be equal to other. So we can simply check, well, is other game object name equals to player? Then we need to ignore the collision between ourselves and other. So now it's not specific to the player, this code here. And the same needs to go down here. We need to use other instead of player collider. So now it's it fits or now it works with anything that has a player tag on it. So let's try to save this and run our game just to test if um, if it still um, if it still works. Let's try to do that. So we land on a platform. I can run through the platform here. I can jump onto the top of the platform. I can jump up here. So everything still works fine as it did before, even though we changed the script. Okay, so. The next thing we'll have to do is to make sure that it also works for our enemies. And the simplest thing to do here is to make an or and say other dot game object dot name equals enemy. So if we are colliding with a player or we are colliding with an enemy, then we ignore the collision. Same goes for the untrick ex exit. If we stop colliding with the player, then we, we don't need to ignore the collision anymore. Same goes for the enemy. If other dot game object dot name, uh, not name the tag sorry, equals enemy. Um, I also use name here. Let's just take tag. That's better because maybe we are going to have, to have more different enemies. Also here with the player, you could also change the name to tag if you want to, as long as your player is tagged as player. We are going to check that in a second. So we do so like this and save then we are checking if the tag is player or the tag is enemy and then we do the ignore collision or unignore collision so let's try this we have our we have our player somewhere let's see if we can find him there the player is tagged as player so it still works and our enemies are tagged as enemy so it should work let's see what happens if we play the game now <clears throat> Just let the enemy start running. Go, he runs, he runs, and she goes past the collider without hitting it. So as you can see here, she's able to run past it without getting pushed down as she just did before. And now she can stand here without standing halfway through the ground here. So it always already looks way better. But right now they're both idling at the same time and they will start running at the same time and it that looks a little odd when they're doing the same things i know she has a longer distance up here but it will still look weird when they stop running at the same time like this so to make it more independent per enemy we can introduce a little randomness to the game and that's usually what you do with uh, your enemies or your ai to make it more um, realistic or what should i say so so they don't all move the same time because imagine if we had 10 enemies here or five or something and they all start moving and stopping at the same time. It looks a little odd then. So we need to jump into our enemy script. And let's see, we have some different things here. We have some melee in here, throwing in here. And 
we have some yeah, current state that execute here. So basically our current state decides when we need to change to another state. So actually we'll need to go into each state and put in some randomness so that it actually um, moves at different points. So let's try to open up our scripts and we should have some enemy states. Let's try the idle state first. We have an idle duration here, which is 10. It's fine with 10, but let's make it into a random number instead. So basically there's a class called random that we can use to do this. So instead of setting the idle duration to 10 here, we can go to our interstate and say idle duration is equal to random dot, um, then I guess it's called unity engine dot random dot range let's see which one of them is newest this one so unit to engine dot random dot range and then you can give it a minimum value and a maximum value so basically i'm going to give it one as the minimum value which means that we can idle for minimum one second and the maximum idle time is 10 seconds so this function here will return a value between one and 10 so let's see um, and the lower bound is inclusive and the maximum is inclusive. This means that it can also return one and it can also return the value of 10. So this generates a random number between one and 10 and returns it into the idle duration so that every time we enter our idle state, it will generate a random number between one and 10 and tell us, well, I'm idling for random time between one and 10, for example, three seconds. Because we're setting this idle duration here, you'll see that inside our idle function, we are idling um, as long as we're larger or as long as we're larger than the idle duration uh, or less than the idle duration, sorry. Because if we are larger than the idle duration, we go into patrol state. So the idle duration here can be random every time we enter the player state. So it's going to be free one time and next time it's five and next time it's one, for example, and so on. And we're doing this in the enter function. So every time we enter the idle state, we generate a new number. That's very important. And we need to do the same for patrol. We go in here, patrol duration is 10. Let's try to say that our, every time we enter patrol, we say patrol duration is equal to random. So unity engine dot random range one and 10. So now we're also going to patrol between one and 10 seconds, random number. So let's try to save this and go into Unity and see what happens. Then the first one starts to run and the next one starts to run. Now they of course made it to the edge at the same time and she stopped, this one's still running and now she started again, now she stopped. So now it looks way better now because it's, it's, it's a random number. So this one is still idling and now it starts to run. So it, it, it looks more, I don't know if you can call it realistic, but it looks better, so to say. Okay, so that's basically what I want to do in this uh, video. You can also see this, this enemy down here also works. It can attack me here and I can kill it, try to kill it like this. And then she died and she will also, of course, uh, respawn after a while, as for now, at least, as you can see here. So now we actually have some enemies that can, uh, more enemies, and they can actually idle and patrol on different times so that they look a little more, uh, they look a little better. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to like my Facebook page, follow me on Twitter, and please subscribe to this channel if you haven't done it. Also remember that Inscope Studio is, is a community founder page, so your support is very, very important to me. You can support me in different ways. You can go to the Patreon page on the screen right here. Um, if you do so, you can get some different perks and you can get all the projects uh, that I've made for this channel. Also, if you want to support me in another way, you can click on the link um, in the bottom of the screen right now, which will take you to a page where you can uh, support me by downloading this uh, single project. You can, of course, also go to the page and get any of my other projects. Again, thank you very much for watching.